Dear friends, first and foremost, I miss you all. My colleagues Christopher, Mark and Daniel, they miss you all. And we send our love to each one of you. We find ourselves in an unprecedented and difficult situation. Two weeks ago, we suspended all public services and group meetings until further notice here in St. George's due to the increasing outspread of the coronavirus. We have to go back in time 81 years to 1939 when during World War II the remaining congregation of the old St. George's Church in Mitte stopped coming together for worship and doors were locked. Current German media and politicians call the effect of this pandemic in proper Denglish ein Stresstest. And it is a stress test for the whole world, a stress test for our home countries, a stress test for Germany, the whole society here, a stress test for the health system, a stress test for cashiers and staff in supermarkets, for the economy, a stress test for our families, for couples, for every individual, and last but not least, a stress test for the Church and our Anglican Communion here at St. George's in Berlin. It is a test for our faith, our solidarity and care and our love. But we are coming together and pray, the first time in St. George's history online. This is a sign of hope, of connectedness, and it marks a new beginning. Today's Passion Sunday. Let us find strength and confidence as we enter today Passion Tide, as we are getting closer to Holy Week, focusing on Jesus sharing our suffering and pain, because he is full of compassion. Let us feel united now with our whole congregation and all humankind as we pray together. O Lord, open our lips. And our hearts shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth. Your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only Son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears. For a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the God. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. 
The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will reject, not reject forever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion. According to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord. All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. For I am poor and in misery. Preserve my soul, for I am faithful. Save your servant, for I put my trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are, go are good and forgiving. Abounding in steadfast love to all you who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. And listen to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my distress, I will call upon you. For you will answer me. Among the gods, there's none like you, O Lord, nor any works like yours. All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wonderful things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your steadfast love towards me. For you have delivered my soul from the depth of the grave. O God, the proud rise up against me, and a ruthless horde seek after my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a token of your favor that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, O Lord, have helped and comforted me. All, All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the offspring of men and animals. Just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down and to overthrow, destroy and bring disaster, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. In those days, people will no longer say, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for his own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes 
His own teeth will be set on edge. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after the time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is what the Lord says, He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. Only if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, will the descendants of Israel ever cease to be a nation before me. This is what the Lord says. Only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below be searched out, will I reject all the descendants of Israel because of all they have done, declares the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Among those who went up 
to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Sidon in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say, Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it, glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up, from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By, By your holy cross Lord, you have redeemed the world. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We preach Christ crucified, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. God forbid that I should glory, safe in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Peace be with you. We're living in difficult times, and to some they may seem surreal, and for most of us there's a tinge of it being life-threatening. This virus on our doorstep reminds us perhaps of those medieval diseases that took root around the world. And today we might feel confused, overwhelmed, daunted and frightened, and probably a mixture of all these things. In normal time, of course, there are plenty of people who have severe illnesses who fear this mortal threat and those who feel oppressed around the world too. But this is different because we all feel it. The infrastructures that we take for granted and the pattern of life that we are used to have disappeared. And we feel mentally challenged as well. Public life as we know it has temporarily ceased. But there is room for hope, because there is always room for hope. Notice how this week people are redefining themselves in light of the new situation. Their true colours are coming out. But notice also how in Berlin people were keen to get into the fresh air and to take in the sunshine and to listen to the twittering of birds. There is a yearning for beauty in this world. George Herbert, the poet who wrote about God, said that even while death lurks, we could see the sweet day so cool, so calm and so bright. There is always room for hope. But it's not just hope. There's also faith, and that's faith in Jesus. 
It's the tool of faith that we can use to get us through this. In Jesus' time, there was a heightened sense of trouble around the corner. We know that plagues and pestilence and invasions, i.e. disasters man-made or natural, form the background to the Bible stories. Jesus knew this too, and he warned us of these nasty blips along the trajectory of history, like this one. And he told us to pay attention to the central message of faith in him at these times. When we hear the Gospel reading, we can take comfort from it. We hear of the Greeks who are visiting Jesus from far away, and indeed these Greeks may have been from a city further up the coast, or even from Greece itself, symbolic perhaps of human civilization. But for them, these Greeks, it was not enough. There was more than man-made endeavour to look for, and they looked for true meaning. And Jesus is very glad when they turn up, because he realises at this point, his whole point of being with us, Jesus being with us, i.e. God in earthly form, is now worthwhile, because people are coming from afar and are beginning to listen. And this is the central message, because Jesus is a giver, and he ultimately and symbolically dies on the cross as a giver for us, to help us believe in him. The essence of faith, of course, is to help others, as God did and does for us. Jesus used lots of analogies to put this message across, and here we have this example of a grain of wheat dying in the ground, in the ground of creation, in God's world, if you like, so that we can grow again and be of use to others. It's an almighty challenge today that the world now behaves a bit like this, because all our actions are bound up with one another. Everything from enterprising food deliveries to that very necessary two metre social distancing. And what brings us together is not just ourselves in relation to God, but the whole church in relation to God. In fact, the whole world subscribing to a greater cause. Revealing this week was the UN Secretary General's call to say that all wars in all corners of the world should now come to a ceasefire agreement. Because goodness really now needs to make itself known. In the Lamentations reading we have also, we hear of the poet lamenting the fall of Jerusalem in 586 BC. And he poses the question, is it nothing to you, all who pass by? We now see this sacrificial goodness playing out. From the priest in northern Italy who gave up his respirator for another sufferer and died as a result of it. Or the thousands of volunteers helping to support the National Health Service in the United Kingdom, and so on. But let's not forget also that prayer is an active form of help. It's bound up in that line from Lamentations, great is your faithfulness. So faith in staying at home is also something we ought to pray for, that it works, that we can find things to do, that we can find the self-discipline and the patience and even a bit of joy. Because as the nurses and doctors who are on the front line keep telling us, please stay at home so we can go to work. As they are doing their bit, we can also do our bit and pray for them and their patients at this particular difficult time. The focus is on the faith. Great is your faithfulness, or the relationships with God and with one another, as we say in our services each week. Perhaps in this dramatic situation we find ourselves in, we do see things in the cold light of day. Our faith is sharpened. And we know that as Jesus tended to ill people wherever he went, because he knows this is our worst form of plight. As we hear from people saying on the streets, as long as you have your health, so we help those who are suffering 
by praying for them. We become a healthier spiritual people, breathing out the prayers just as we breathe in the fresh air. To God be the glory. Amen. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well, Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal us from our fear which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Lord, in your mercy, Jesus Christ, heal of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and to put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with the leaders of this country, our home countries and all nations. Give them the foresight to act 
with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, stay with us here in St. George's as we endure and trust, persist and prepare. In place of our anxiety, give us your, your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. and standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, Set us free to serve him with confidence and joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.